Hi, my name is Ilma and welcome to my channel. I've been posting Christian blogs for nine straight years, almost every day, and uh, today I'd like to share 1 Corinthians 7, verses 25 to 31. And here's the Word of God. Now, concerning virgins, I have no command of the Lord, but I am offering direction as one who by the mercy of the Lord is trustworthy. I think then that this is good in view of the present distress, that it is good for a man to remain as he is. Are you bound to a wife? Do not seek to be released. Are you released from a wife? Do not seek a wife. But if you marry, you have not sinned. And if a virgin marries, she has not sinned. Yet such people as yourselves will have trouble in this life, and I am trying to spare you. But this I say, brothers, the time has been shortened, so that from now on those who have wives should be as though they had none, and those who weep as though they did not weep, and those who rejoice as though they did not rejoice, and those who buy as though they did not pass, possess, and those who use the world as though they did not make full use of it, for the present form of this world is passing away. 1 Corinthians 7, verses 25 to 31. And here's my blog. Instruction to the Unmarried In this letter, Paul addresses the unmarried. He uses the word virgin both for men and women, who haven't been committed to someone in a covenant. Paul wrote this letter approximately in the year 53 to 54 AD, according to some Bible instructions to this book. I'm sorry, according to some Bible introductions to this book of uh, Corinthians. Persecutions of believers started and Stephen had been martyred during that time. Roman Emperor Nero began his cruel persecutions of Christians. During these times, it was completely illegal to be a Christian in the Roman Empire. To declare that you are a follower of Jesus was considered a capital crime against the state of Rome. It was during these distressed times that Paul wrote this letter. Eusebius, a Christian who wrote a history of the early church in around 380, wrote a description of the unthinkable torture and executions of early believers. Husbands, wives, children, the elderly, pastors, or anyone who admitted that they were a follower of Christ would be denied, disowned by their own family because of the impact it would have on their own lives. They were almost considered criminals against the Roman Empire. It is in this context that Paul instructs the single men and women of the body of believers. He says that the Lord has not commanded this, but because of such circumstances they are experiencing. He is advising the unmarried to stay single and stay put whatever situation they are at the moment. Being a follower of Jesus has presented many challenges because of the Roman oppression of faith in Jesus. Paul isn't discouraging marriage, but presents the advantages of remaining single in this time of distress. Reflection Is Paul's advice to the unmarried still applicable in our current times now? And if so, how? I think it is still um, applicable to our current times now. Um, he's talking about distress in terms of oppression uh, to exercise their faith and um, in our current world today there has been so much proliferation of religion of um, all this uh, gender transgender stuff that um, is so much uh, a world worldly stuff so I think uh, it is a wise advice for Paul to tell those who are unmarried to stay where they are 
and in 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 a verse here it also says that if you are married to stay married and do not leave your your spouse or if um, you have left your spouse to stay where you are so in other words he's saying to be content to what you are and where you are at this point so uh, he said in an earlier in a previous part of this letter that um, it is important to be content with um, where you are, uh, especially um, as I mentioned earlier in the first part of this uh, 1 Corinthians 7, that uh, if you are uh, married to an unbeliever, that it is the one who is a believer that sanctifies the marriage so anything can happen god can do anything god can change the heart of your spouse so in this instruction to the unmarried i think because if you are a servant of the lord jesus christ you are a slave of christ he's your master and you belong to him so when you marry someone there is a big big tendency that you will have divided um, loyalty or that you will have divided uh, priorities. So if you're, let's say, in the case of someone who is uh, in an un, uh, unequally yoked marriage, the case uh, where the unbeliever is um, serving the world and the believer is serving the Lord, so those are two opposing things. Therefore, it is a very, very hard situation because now you are going to be in trouble because uh, when you got married, the two become one. So whoever is leading that marriage, is heading that marriage, is bound to, is bound to Christ. They, they are responsible. Uh, responsible for to Jesus especially if they're the head if they're the husband so now in the case of the unmarried it is easier to serve the Lord if you are unmarried because you have no responsibilities towards a person in other words uh, if you're a spouse you're supposed to submit to your husband and if you're if you're a a husband you're supposed to take care of your of your spouse you're supposed to lead your spouse so in the case of the unmarried they don't have that responsibility so it is not as complex as it would be if you are single to serve the Lord in other words you can make the Lord your whole life because you don't have to think of your responsibilities or your other roles so I think it this is applicable because in marriage a lot of people have this notion a uh, lot of single men and women think that marriage is uh, a thing that is that is a fairy tale thing it's romanticized uh, they don't realize that marriage is a lot of work it's it's work because two people two different people are put together and the only way it's gonna work is if God is in that marriage if it's not if God is not present in that marriage, there's, it's not going to last. So I encourage you, those who aren't married, to stay where you are and uh, be thankful because there's more advantages to being single than to being married in this case as Paul presents it. Thanks for watching. I hope you check my website at ilmaars.com for artworks, photographs, and a copy of this blog. And I hope you subscribe to my channel on YouTube so I could make more videos to bring the good news to you. Thanks for watching.